By 2014, Turkey had a $5 million combat drone in the sky and on export lists. The United States did it in less than six years. Europe? A decade and $7.1 billion later, still nothing to show but PowerPoint slides and a unit cost over four times higher. If European industry leads the world in aerospace, why can't they deliver the drone they promised? And what does this failure say about Europe's future on the battlefield? The numbers tell a story you haven't heard. Baycar, a private Turkish company, began developing what would become the Bayraktar TB2 in 2003. By 2014, the TB2 was flying operational missions. Each unit cost just $5 million. That single design now serves in 34 countries, from Ukraine to Azerbaijan, and has generated nearly $1.8 billion in exports by 2024. The TB2 holds about 65% of the global market for medium-altitude long-endurance drones. General Atomics in the United States started work on the MQ-9 Reaper in 2001. The first Reapers entered service in 2007, six years after development began. Over 400 MQ-9 Reapers have been delivered to Allied Air Forces across the world. Each unit costs around $15 million. The MQ-9 has logged 18 years of combat experience and is now the NATO standard for this class of drone. Both the TB-2 and the MQ-9 set clear benchmarks, affordable, combat-proven, and widely exported. These are not luxury projects. They are operational systems, delivered on timelines that match the urgency of modern warfare. Russian armored columns rolled toward Kiev in February 2022. Overhead, Ukrainian operators launched TB-2 drones, medium-altitude, long-endurance machines built in Turkey, not Europe. Footage of precision strikes on fuel convoys and command vehicles spread across social media, transforming the TB-2 from a military tool into a symbol of resistance. Ukrainian analysts credited these drones with delaying Russian advances during the early weeks of the invasion, especially in the Kiev and Kherson campaigns. Each sortie provided real-time intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, giving Ukrainian artillery units the targeting data needed to counter a much larger force. For European defense ministries watching the conflict, the message was clear. Operational drones were not a luxury, but a necessity. Parliamentary hearings and defense committee meetings across Europe replayed these combat clips, with lawmakers asking why their own forces lacked this capability. Every month without a domestic solution meant deeper dependence on foreign suppliers. As battlefield results circulated online, the urgency to deliver a European drone shifted from technical ambition to political imperative. Eurodrone's sticker price lands with a thud. 22 million euros per aircraft. That is not a typo. Each drone is budgeted at more than four times the cost of its most successful rival. The official pricing table, stamped and circulated in 2024, lays it out. 22 million euros per unit, with a total program budget of 7.1 billion euros for just 60 drones. This is not a gold-plated prototype or a one-off demonstrator. It is the planned production cost, locked in before a single aircraft has flown. For every Eurodrone, a defense ministry could buy more than four proven competitors. The multiplier is not buried in fine print, it is the headline number, visible to every finance minister and parliamentary committee. In a year when budgets tighten and battlefield demand is urgent, this figure turns every procurement meeting into a crisis. The question that now dominates every discussion is, how did a European drone become the world's most expensive in its class before it even exists? Seven years passed between the Eurodrone's launch and the signing of its first development contract in February 2022. During this period, four nations and three major contractors negotiated every detail, from work share to technical requirements. Once the contract was in place, the project was supposed to move quickly to its next major milestone, the preliminary design review. That review, scheduled for September 2023, did not happen on time. The German Ministry of Defense cited coordination issues as the official reason. Behind the scenes, Airbus and Dassault clashed over which engine supplier would win out. Airbus favored an Italian-made GE engine, while Dassault pushed for a French Saffron alternative. Months dragged on without resolution. The review was finally completed in May 2024, eight months late. 
That single delay added an estimated 1.4 billion euros to the program's cost, an overrun of more than a third, before a prototype even existed. By the time the design was approved, the project's budget was already spiraling, and the drone itself remained on paper. The Eurodrone's maximum takeoff weight landed at 11,000 kilograms, two and a half times heavier than America's MQ-9 Reaper. The reason traces back to a single policy, Germany's demand for twin engines, justified as a safeguard for flights over cities. On paper, redundancy promised safety. In practice, it forced designers to build a larger airframe, double up on fuel, and reinforce every system, multiplying mass at each step. French officials reviewing the numbers in the Senate called the result too heavy, too expensive, suffering from obesity. The drone's sheer size rippled through every cost calculation, pushing the unit price to 20 million euros, over four times the cost of Turkey's TB2. Instead of a nimble, affordable system, Europe produced a machine so heavy and costly that partner nations began to question whether it met any operational need. The technical compromise, born from political caution, left the Eurodrone stranded between ambition and reality. German Ministry of Defense reports, French Senate transcripts, and official contract documents form the backbone of this investigation. The program's timeline and cost figures are sourced directly from procurement releases and OCCAR statements. These records are verified. On screen, each claim is tied to a specific document or public record, with the supporting document cited for every point. For insight, the documentary brings together a former Airbus program manager, a German defense analyst, a French Senate committee member, and an Italian procurement official. Each interviewee addresses their nation's role and the program's stumbling blocks, and what went wrong at each stage. A Baykar representative explains the Turkish approach to rapid drone development, and a Ukrainian military analyst discusses battlefield outcomes and operational needs. The emphasis is on what worked and why. Every statistic, quote, and timeline is anchored in verifiable documentation, ensuring that each detail withstands scrutiny. The result is a record that draws from primary sources and first-hand accounts, providing a clear foundation before examining the fallout of Europe's drone ambitions. Germany, once the driving force behind Eurodrone, signed a deal in 2024 to acquire 14 Israeli Heron TP drones. The contract bypassed the waiting game for a European solution, delivering immediate operational capability. Italy, another core partner in the Eurodrone project, finalized the purchase of six United States MQ-9 Reapers in August 2024, spending $738 million for aircraft, support, and training. These decisions were not isolated. Poland, though eligible for future Eurodrone deliveries, opted for Turkish Bayraktar TB2 drones in 2021 and added a lease for United States MQ-9 Reapers to bolster its NATO commitments. Each procurement moved through defense ministries and parliamentary committees in full view of their Eurodrone partners. Instead of waiting for a delayed and unproven European platform, these countries chose systems with proven records and rapid delivery. The message from Europe's own stakeholders was clear. Confidence in Eurodrone had eroded. The search for immediate capability outweighed loyalty to a troubled domestic project. Four nations, three contractors, and four separate sets of requirements make up the foundation of the Eurodrone program. Every technical decision, from airframe size to engine selection, passes through a maze of national interests and industrial politics. Each country demands a share of production, a say in design, and a guarantee of jobs at home. The result is a system where progress halts at every veto point and compromise replaces clarity. Germany insists on urban safety, France pushes for export potential, Italy prioritizes NATO standards, and Spain wants visible participation. No single vision drives the project. Compare this to Baykar, the Turkish firm behind the TB2. One company, one leadership team, and a direct line from design to production. Decisions are fast, trade-offs are clear, and the end product reflects a unified purpose. Where Baykar achieved results in 11 years, Europe's committee approach stretches to 15 years, and it still delivers nothing operational. The structure itself is the obstacle. Today, Europe's defense giants still meet in boardrooms while foreign drones fly the missions that matter. As security threats accelerate, capability gaps become vulnerabilities. The lesson is simple. 
In modern warfare, consensus can cost more than defeat. What's your take? Does process outweigh progress? Share your view below.